Hello, everybody, and welcome to our special Mystica 10 Masterclass. Thank you all uh, for joining us today. My name is Eva, and I'm Marketing Manager here at SGO. Um, from SGO with me today on the panel, also Cristobal Bolaños, SGO Product Specialist. Thank you for joining us, Cristobal. Thanks to you for inviting me. Of course. So today we have a great pleasure of hosting LA colorist and finishing artist Juan Cabrera, who will talk Hi, about Anna. episodic finishing workflow in uh, Mystica Boutique. Hi, Juan. Uh, many thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, it's, always, it's always great to be here with you guys. Thank you so much. Um, so for all of you who still don't know Juan, uh, Juan started his career in Madrid, in Spain, 24 years ago, working as a VFX supervisor and animator. After 11 years in the VFX industry, he evolved his career towards color and finishing. His background in visual effects helped him immensely on the technical side of color grading and color science, and he often blends both of the worlds when needed. And that's how he actually discovered SGO and uh, our Mystica technology. He has been working with Mystica since version one, and he has been an active beta taster and new features proposer since the beginning. This has allowed him to develop a very close relationship with the software, integrating it on every project and company he has ever worked on. Juan has worked with Mystica on major blockbusters like Prometheus, Amazing Spider-Man, Star Trek Into the Darkness, Transformers Age of Extinction, and Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens. For this one, he won two AIS awards. On the television side, he has worked on shows like Sony Startup, Microsoft Quantum Break, and more recently, The Alienist Angel of Darkness for TNT. So six years ago, he opened his own finishing studio, Lightbender, where he has three color rooms with SGO Mystica Ultima and two support rooms with Mystica Boutique and Mystica Workflows, providing all color and finishing services, including advanced formats like 4K, 8K, HFR, HDR, etc. So Lightbender is Dolby Vision certified and MPAA security compliant. His clients include Sony, Paramount, Microsoft, Netflix, Hulu, THX, and many others. Impressive resume indeed, Juan. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining us today. And obviously, um, I think our attendees will, uh, are very interested to see what, what you have to tell us about Mystica. Yeah. Um, so just before we dig into presentation, a quick recommendation. Um, make your Zoom window full screen um, for a better viewing experience. And um, at the end of the session, we'll also open, open some time for the Q&A. So if you have some questions during the session, please place them in the Q&A panel that you find in the lower tab of the Zoom window. Okay, so um, I guess uh, we can already start um, with the main presentation. Uh, Juan, you promised me to show us today how you use Mystica Boutique and Ultima to create high profile episodic finishing workflow. So I suggest that we start with the time space organization. You say that it's essential to comprehensively set up the time space as it can importantly facilitate the whole finishing process. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the, the, the main reason why I wanted to organize this, this masterclass is to show the, the unique things that Mystica has um, for this kind of, uh, for this kind of projects. Because I mean, you can think about like, it's very easy to fall into like um, com comparing color tools or this or that. Now, I mean, I think, I think the, the, the tools are, are quite amazing in Mystica, but something like the timeline, in this case, you guys have uh, the infinite canvas or what you call the time space it gives you a level of freedom and a, and a level of of ease uh, when it comes to deal with with all kinds of projects and especially the difficult project where you're conforming multiple times when it's a live project that is still on the edit uh, or com complex workflows that to us uh, it has been a game changer since the beginning. It allows us to be more competitive and be able to do things that other places struggle with. And uh, and I wanted to show you a, a glimpse of that. Um, out of all the, I mean, thank you for the little super long intro. I mean, it feels kind of weird to be <laughs> to all of it. Because you're, you're talking about a lot of praise and all I can remember is the, the long nights working for, for 30 hours straight and all that stuff. And when you condense it like that, it's, it's fun. Um, 
like I wanted to I, I wanted to show you one of the episodics because episodics is one of those things that you have you have usually it's a faster workflow, faster pace than when you're doing a feature. Uh, it's more back and forth, more reviews, and I think it's a good example of of um, of, um, of the infinite canvas and everything that you can do with it. And I'm going to do it with uh, with the TV series Startup, that most of the places in the world you can watch it probably through Amazon Prime, I think. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to, most of the demo is going to be with episode two of, uh, of season three. There's a reason for that. Uh, let me just get into it. Let's open Mystica and start ranking. All right. And as you said, I mean, most of our whole workflow is based on mm -hmm. Mystica. I mean, we have our backbone is the Mystica Ultima. Um, we have the Mystica Boutique as support. Everything is sharing the same storage. Even the storage was provided by SDO as well. Uh, I think it's called SDO Open Storage. Or it was called when, when we got it. Mm -hmm. We basically have, have uh, half a petabyte of storage. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> That's impressive. Really, really sweet. Uh, and I want more. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, Everything is shared in between the machines. Everything is connected with either fiber or 10 gigabit Ethernet. So the systems work seamlessly, one with each other. You know, and 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 you have to think about that as well. You want a software where it's it's easy to have a software where you work on a single user environment. But of course, you want a software when you scale it up, you're gonna have more people working within it. You know, like color color is conform artists, all kinds of things. Um, I saw also Juan that you have different users. That's why that's because you have different hotkeys preferences um, and so on. In theory, yes. The reality is like I'm uh, I'm I'm I, I try to everybody has the same hotkeys. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But yes, I mean some people like their own hotkeys, like uh like I've trained a couple of people who were coming from different softwares and they wanted to have their own hotkeys and stuff. So we have the hotkeys flavors there for every user and etc. Et That's very helpful. But also because we're jumping from machine to machine sometimes, mm -hmm. um, the fact that you have your user, if you're working on a project on one machine, you go to another machine, you open your user and you are in the same project that you were before. So That's there right. are there are a lot of advantages to have uh, to have um, to have the users for sure all right so let's start with this i mean you're gonna hear a word in this through this seminar uh, many times which is organization and uh, order i mean and it's crucial when you're coming to uh, uh to something like an episodic to make sure that you have a folder structure to make sure that everything is fine every, every, everything is organized correctly etc etc uh and that has to translate to the to the timeline of course so i'm gonna open this startup was a show that had Many deliverables. Um, it's a show that was UHD, so 3840 by 2160. You can see here on the top the resolution. Um, but we also had to deliver like an SDR, uh, HD, UHD, HDR, uh, like an assembly master, all kinds of things. Um, all the mastering process and everything was also done with Mystica. And this is the timeline. You know, I'm sure you have seen other other masterclass and stuff. You have seen a timeline where you show, a, you see a, a few notes there, so you can see an effect. But this is like a real world example of a of, of a timeline, right? Where you can have all kinds of things. And I want to show you. Let me turn off the live. I want to show you why it's like that and uh, why it's like that and why the different sections. To me, it's very important to visually see what's what's going on. Mystica. Again, because of the because of the freedom of having the canvas and being able to really move around and 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 see everything really infinite in every direction, and that gives you a lot of a lot of freedom to be able to do all kinds of things. Uh, when it comes to organization, even if in Mystica you can have multiple levels, multiple nodes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I think it's always better when you have try to have them. Uh, at the same level, at least when you're working on certain sequences, because that's going to allow you to, uh, in an easier way, move back and forth um, between shots. You can see that I have some nodes that go across multiple things, some others that don't. So let me start breaking this for you. Um, this section here is, for example, what we call the text list. It's at the end of the episode. It's just like all the texted sections that we have had here with subtitles and whatnot. It has to be put clean at the end. Um, you can see it there. You can see in this in this timeline, and another reason why I chose it is because we have we have everything that you can have on an episodic. From like uh, we have a previously on, which we will show um, a little bit later how to deal with those kind of things when it comes to conform it quickly. You have your graphics, you have your main show main show graphics, you have your main credits. You can see here all the different main credits of the actors. You know these are all brought in in Mystica. 
and these require multiple adjustments. And the fact that you can see them like this, uh, like floating like that, uh, at one point, if, if if there is a decision of moving one credit to one place or another, is as simple as as just kind of place it wherever it goes, you know. And and, and being able to see that and and work with that quickly, um, it, it's really 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 amazing. Um, we have subtitles as well. There's a section in this episode that is in Spanish, so we have a bunch of subtitles here. If you see, even even the text was actually created with Mystica in this case. For the main for the main show titles, those were graphics that were sent to us if i go inside of this group you can see how i'm i have my 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 thing with alpha channel and then i'm fading in and out and then i'm composing this with a com 3d on top of picture etc etc you can see these big sections here with a com 3d that's because in this in this show i'm adding i'm adding grain um to the picture at the end so that's another thing that you can have work independently um, you don't have to do it like in a shot by shot basis. You can even tweak it depending on the section or the or the or the sequence if you want to. And again, you have to feel like you own the timeline. You know, this is your space. It's a white canvas where you can do whatever whatever you want. Like uh, in this case, this is all set up for output, so it has our legalizer at the end. So a little secret color source that we put at the end of every project. Um, scope that is just covering everything else. You can just hide all of this, even the grain and everything, if you just want to concentrate on what you're doing here. I mean, you have to think that this this is your playground. This is your playground to be able to to just just move around and do and do whatever you need, really. All right. You will see on the sequences most of the stuff is lined up, as I said before. You will notice that I have some things hidden here. Again, this is. This is the other advantage of having something so flexible. It's the fact that you can make it your own. And this is something that I started doing many years ago and I, and I kept doing it, which is I, these are all visual effects. You can see how the color changes because this is actually a group and I have the, the visual effect. The visual effect, I have it here versus I have the raw over here. Um, this is a show that has quite a, quite a few VFX. This episode, for example, has uh, around 700 and something shots. Uh, I think it's around 700 or 600 something shots, uh, 742 shots, um, of which almost 50 are visual effects. Which is not crazy. It's not like a science fiction show. Like the one that we just finished had like on the first episode, like around 150 or something like that. Um, but again, I feel like having the having the, the the visual effects marked in a way where you can easily see them. Uh, it helps you again in this process of going back and forth with editorial, um, doing F F VFX checks. You know, like uh, it's it's very common that we have to send EDLs to um, to the VFX team to make sure that we have the right version, that everything has been placed correctly. So having marked where you have the VFX, it's um, it's very helpful in that regard. And again, that's just like a, a little a solid. It's a solid that I have hidden there. But it's a visual cue. I mean, you can of course use marks as well, or you can use notes saying stuff like um, check this. Oops, I have to be on top of it. Check, check this. But you just have to find ways that work for you. For me, having like those hidden notes, it's um, it's not invasive. Um, it shows me where things are, and it, it's 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 quite helpful. Uh, when it comes to when it comes to organization or conform or different versions, we go again with the same thing. This is your space. I mean, if at one point you're doing a change in this, in this section, remember, you can just duplicate it. You can very easily just drag it up, duplicate it, work in this section. You can have more versions. You can have different cuts. You can group it. You can go inside of the group. You can deal with it without seeing everything else. Uh, that's, that's really important when you're, when, when, you, when you're dealing with, with multiple multiple elements, multiple back and forth, uh, I think that that uh, that becomes really helpful. You know, uh, let me see some more stuff. When it comes down to the timeline, usually we prefer to have our reference down here. The way it's organized. I know when we were mentioning about, when we were talking about this, we were mentioned a couple of other things the other day. I mean, I you know we want mm -hmm. to talk about like back and forth of working with the client, working with color grading. Yes, yeah, so uh, we're think, talking about consistency. Mm -hmm. So I think the the uh, we we said about um, the match and paste uh, to use it for um, for the um, uh, previous. That's round. correct. Yeah. 
Definitely. That, that's my favorite, I think. So I Your think um, people will like it. All right. Yeah, like because I also want to show you a little bit about like utilizing the timeline with with versioning and all that stuff. But like since we're talking about match and paste, I think it would be it would be a good moment to um, to check that out. Mm -hmm. Match and paste. Mystica has a couple of ways of being able to integrate. Has a couple of ways of being able to integrate other type of shots and 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 like like other versions and stuff into the timeline. Um, back in the day, every time you render, Mystica generates what is called an R and D file. And um, and you can use those files because they have time code information. They have they have metadata and stuff like that. So you can basically, when you're conforming, you can conform against them. And and Mystica brings them all in, and you can actually kind of conform to all versions and stuff like that. The advan the the huge thing about match and paste is that it's the same thing but in a visual way, and you can use it by sections. You know, as before with when you were doing R and D's, which we still do sometimes. Um, you have your EDL or your AAF. And you're just you're just conforming against against them with match and paste. You can work by sections. You can work by doing the whole thing or or just doing those um, those little things, which is which is really advantageous both for conform and color to, and, and and bring the color and all that stuff. Uh, let's let's try to do that and let's let's talk a little bit about. For example, you have an episode. This is episode two, as we talked before, and here we have what is called the previously on. You know the previously on. Sorry. The previously on is uh, is basically a uh, reminder of what happened on the previous episode, right? Uh, and most of the shots, I mean, of course, they're going to be on the previous episode. As you move in the series, I mean, you're going to have more and more and more and more from the previous episodes. Uh, bringing that in, it can be a headache because it's like little snippets from different things, especially when you're in episode seven and it's bringing stuff from seven different episodes. It, it, it can be complicated to bring all of that up when you're conforming back and forth, but match and pace really makes it very, 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 very easy. So let me start by cleaning up one of the timelines. Let's load. Uh, Eva, can you can you talk one second? Yeah, sure. Of I course. Yeah. No, no, yes, it's just because I could, I didn't know if I mute my mic or not. Sorry. No, no, no. We we hear you perfectly. Uh, I'm, I'm my, just my muted speaker, in sorry, the I, meantime, so um, I, I, I was meaning my speaker, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna open uh, episode three hundred one. Now, usually the like the way I like to do it is I like to clean up the the timeline first, so I can just bring the elements that I want. Match and paste works really, really great even if you don't do the cleanup. Like if you guys want, uh, we, can, we can do the test for that later. Uh, you don't really have to, to spend the time, but it might be a good, a good way of showing you a little bit closer though, some of those elements. Like I'm, since what I'm gonna be bringing is gonna be the color shots and all that stuff, I don't need, I don't need the grain, I don't need, uh, I don't need the text list, I don't need the graphics. And you can see how quickly I can move around. I can even just deactivate the video so I can even go quicker. I don't even know. I don't even have to see what I'm, what I, what I'm, uh, what I'm looking at because I can just hit, just delete these solids, which are the commercial breaks. Just go through. I can just delete all of these subtitles. You know what I mean? I can delete all of that. I can delete this. this well, that's problem. only possible if you're organized as you. You know. Ex <laughs> but that's but that's what you have to be. I mean, like, um, especially when you're working on an environment with multiple people, or even for yourself, for your own safety. I mean, like. Imagine you come back to this timeline in two months' time, and it's all madness. I mean, you're not going to remember. I mean, you may remember when you're in the heat of the moment, but not not now. You know, and, and it's a whole 48 minutes timeline that we just cleaned up, and now we have only the shots that we need. You know what I mean? So let's just copy this. Copy. And then let's go to episode two. Oops, that's episode three with all my masters. Uh, which I can show you later, so you can see like all the different timelines and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, let's see previously on. There are other tutorials about conformance stuff. So this we just assume I got an EDL and then I got my shots. You can see I have, I have my shots over here. They're just log. They're just brought in. So there's nothing there. There's a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna start with match and paste. For match and paste, you select the elements that you want to uh, match on top of the the shots and everything that you have. Um, <clears throat> click match and paste. And then it's going to give you a few options, you know, the options that we're going to want for sure. I mean, match media source path. I mean, that might be helpful if you're having the same media in two different places and you want to make sure that it only takes from the same place that can be useful. But of course we want to match time code range and we want to match real name, which is the, the elements that is going to use to, to grab it. 
in this case, because I want to keep the color grading exactly the way I had it with all the animation, all the shapes, all the stuff, um, you want to make sure that you keep original keyframes. Here you have several options and uh, where most of the time you're gonna want to keep the original keyframes in place. Sometimes for some reason you may want to scale it because shots are different lengths, but you'll have to review it, of course. You can ignore it. Um, in this in this section of replacing the effect and whatnot, I usually always replace them, but there may be a situation where for whatever reason you don't want to replace some of the effects, so you can just say to append or do not replace. In this case, we don't care, so let's replace it. Boom. All right, so you see a bunch of shots that have already come up. Okay, all of these shots are the shots that match the criteria that we used to um, um, for for the for the previously on. Bear in mind that most of the time they use shots that are already in the episode, but at the same time the editors may use sections of those shots that are outside of the time code range that we use on the episodes. So that's why you have some of them that are not coming up. You know, you see like how all of these are all color graded already. Everything is looking great. All right, so now let's let's get these shots that didn't link. You know, and I can I like to do it like. You can just move them up and you can just do it in stages. All right, so let's select these guys and then do another match and paste. But this time, instead of match time code range, I'm going to say, no, don't match the time code range. Just let's just, just paste if you find the, 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 right, the right real name. Um, just, uh, just paste them. I'm going to ke still keep the original keyframes. What that's going to be doing there, because of course it's working on sections that is not within what I was doing, is that imagine you have a shot and you have an animation from here to here, okay? If the section that we're loading, it's on this side, then it's gonna keep whatever keyframe was in the, at the end. If the section is on this side, it's gonna keep whatever was at the, at the, at the beginning. You know what I mean? So it, I do still want to keep the original keyframes just in case. If not, you can always tweak it. Let's do it again, boom, and he's finding a few more. These green things that you see on top are groups. Mystica shows you everything that, uh, because we're matching by real name, and not by time code. Of course, there are certain uh, through the show. Through the show, there has been certain different takes. That, uh, sorry, different shots that have the same real name. So Mystic is saying, "Hey, I found two of these. Which one do you want?" And you can just easily compare them, just hide them. I mean, these two are exactly the same, so I I don't really care. I can just use the one that he, he brought up. Um, this one's this one's the same probably too. So I can just delete it. And I know that this one has a couple of them. This one we have one that was a little bit a little bit darker, one a little bit brighter. So then that's just up to you to see the sequence and see at that specific point what makes sense. I mean, maybe there was a light variation or because it was in context, um, then you, I mean, we tweak the color for whatever reason. In this case, I'll probably stay with the brighter version since we have a very bright shot of her after that. So you can just delete the bottom one and group this one, then you have it. You know, this one I don't even care. And let's bring these guys down. And you can again see how I am constantly using the, the infinite canvas to just use, like, 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 like I'm using the space to help myself, you know, to just like put section, okay, I'm going to concentrate on dealing with these guys. I don't want to deal with these other guys right now. Uh, and we will see even more of it when we go to the next section when we're talking about client reviews and, and different layering and all that stuff. Because I think that's, that's really important too. Coffee is important. <laughs> the most important, actually. <laughs> All right. So why did this shot didn't link? Why, why this guy is not linked? Um, this shot, it's uh, from a different take, you know? So I have this shot. I remember this shot. I created a shot or a similar shot to this one. But for whatever reason, maybe because of the movement of the actress or, or whatever reason, they decided it was better to use this take instead of the one that we had on the episode. So we don't have this but we have a different take. So if we do match and paste again, again, without matching time code, because of course we don't have it, we go to match real name, and you can see here that it has an option, say real name max. That's the um, maximum number of characters that it's gonna use to match the real name. By default, it's gonna use them all. Uh, in this case, we want to see if we can really get the take. Remember, most magazines, more cam most cameras, you can see that they have like four digit, that is usually the magazine code, then you have the clip, whatever, and then you have like a serial number in here. Um, so we're gonna go for the magazine name. I mean, assuming that they, they kept uh, the same thing, like in the same magazine, just a different clip, like maybe it's clip, I don't know, like clip 
it's the clip that we had is two or three, and this is clip one. So let's just do match and paste. And we're gonna tell it to use only four digits. This should latch only to the first four digits. When I do it, now I have color. You know, of course, in these cases, any case that is any case like this where any case like this where where you're bringing something that was not on your show or was not on your episode, it's something that you, of course, are gonna have to review and make sure that it's fine. In this case, I mean, in this this character, it's also always a little bit pale, and I can see that she feels a little bit tan in this shot compared to the way he is. So you can very easily just once once you have it, you can just very easily just go compensate a little bit for that. Just make sure that we make her live within the environment correctly. Maybe even bring up brightness a little bit. You know. And it feels like she is a little bit more on that environment. So now when we play it, everything makes more sense. Mm -hmm. All right. But then it's like, oh, but you left a bunch of other ones here. What's the problem with these guys? All right. Mm -hmm. These guys, for some reason, are from season, are from the previous season, these shots. All of these shots are from the previous season, so they're not really here. Uh, in this case, then you can, of course, if you, I mean, if, if, it's, if this is a project where you did the previous session, as, the, previous, the previous season as well, just open your previous season and archive it bring, it, bring it back from the LTOs, bring the correction back, or you can just create them from scratch as a reference or doing whatever you want. But you can see how everything, that, all, all the work that we have done already, all the, all the work that was done for this episode, uh, all the color that we did, all the animations, everything has been brought back. I'm gonna just create my solid for my effects, and this is ready to place in the. This is ready to be placed on the episode. So you can see how you can use match and paste, not just as a thing to use with the with the, <clears throat> not just as something to use on a timeline level, mm -hmm. but you can do it by sections, mm -hmm. and that's extremely powerful. Think about it. I mean, when you're doing, for example, uh, you're you're reconforming your show, you know, because you are, uh, let me just put this in place so we can have something going on there <laughs> while I talk. Um, you know, like you might be, you, you might be just doing, you, you might, you, you might be doing, uh, <clears throat> a conform from a version that is not, you might be doing a conform from a version that is not, not, not really that much different. You know what I mean? It can be, it can be something that, it can be something that only certain sections of the only certain sections of the episode changed. You know, like uh, you don't want to go through the hassle of recheck everything. You know that it's only happened on Act Three. Then you can concentrate on Act Three. You can bring your reference. You can bring your reference in and uh, and, and 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 leave everything else. You can open it up and uh, and check it out. One very silly thing is is, is something that happened the other day to us. Uh, let me let me show it to you in the episode. I just I just thought about it, uh, but it also shows about the um, the infinite canvas, and is that uh, on one of the episodes that we just did uh, when, when we were working on the Alienist, I mean, there was a change where they actually added stuff at the beginning of the episode, you know? And it was this massive thing because, I mean, of course, I mean, now you have to push everything. You know, we have to add these shots at the beginning of the episode, and then you have to push everything, and we have marks, you know? Like, uh, let, me, let me just, like, we have, like, like marks and notes and all kinds of things all around here, and it's, like, sup this super mega complex thing that now we have to move everything just because you have to insert a few shots. Well, in Mystica, you can actually just... Let me show you. You can just, let's just say we open up here and we're gonna put these shots. Imagine these are the new shots. I mean, these are, these are of course, I'm just taking them from here, okay? But let's let's play pretend for a little bit. So these are the new shots that we, I want to bring in. This is the show in, I can just put it here. I can just put these guys here. Okay, so those are the new shots that we're bringing in. Let me just bring this close. But of course, our timecode is not starting the right way now. It should start here. Well, guess what? In Mystica, you can just move the timecode. <laughs> so that's it. We're done. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah. Simple as that. You cannot do it in any other program that I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's not something that it's not like I'm not defining just the in initial timecode of the of the mm -hmm. shot or any, of the show or anything like that. I'm literally just not moving anything at all on my timeline. Just adding the few shots that I need on this section, and. Uh, and literally placing the time code wherever the hell I want. 
you know, it's it, absolutely it, 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 that was really helpful. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I promised you to show you what happens when you bring in the timeline without cleaning it up first. So this is our, our clean timeline again. Let me go back to episode one. You know, I'm just gonna take out, of course, the output. I mean, I mean I'm even gonna leave the text, I don't care. So let's just copy that. I mean, I'm not doing any cleanup whatsoever. I copy that. Let's open it up again. Go to episode two, boom, 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 boom. All right, select this. Match and paste again. Boom, 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 boom. Keep a renal match. Uh, real name to the max. Boom, bah. and there you go. You still have them here. Yeah, here absolutely. A very, very powerful feature. And um, what you, what you've been speaking about, it's actually it shows you know how how flexible the system is. Yeah, um, and I th I think it helps to be organized. You know, I think it's better if you can clean it up first and make sure that you're not bringing more stuff. Also, because I mean. You, you want to be as precise as possible, maybe, you know, like uh, don't introduce some stuff. I mean, sometimes when you bring it, it may bring graphics that are not necessary for that section or something like that. Um, so, but just play with it. Just play with it and try it, you know? Yeah, yeah. At, the, at the same time, you are using the different tools in Mystica to be organized, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a matter of you have all the different tools and, uh, and, and you can combine them together. You know, and, and you don't have to, and, and, and I will strongly recommend, like, it's very cool that when you're starting, when you're working with Mystic and stuff, you're going for the, for the big notes, you know, you're going for the color grade, you're going for this and that and the time warp and, and all of that stuff. But get to know this section here, get to know the scope, the feedback, mm -hmm. the connect, the dummy. I mean, th those, those guys over there, those are, those are really the powerhouse, the, the, the powerhouse of, of, of all the crazy ideas and all the different things that you can do with this you know like uh like like using the same shot like like imagine you have to use the same shot in two places um like with two different color graders and blending between it but it's a very heavy shot so you can use feedback to duplicate that shot but only show it only read it once and then use it multiple times optimizing your workflow um with dummies you can create your own pre-coms and mm -hmm. like like really do a, a lot of stuff like if you have a look or a specific like um you're doing a flashback and you want to do like a typical flashback look or something like that with vignetting with a bunch of stuff. You can put that on a dummy and just put it on top of the shots instead of having like another big stack. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So, so there's a, there's a, there are a lot of advantages to that. Mm -hmm. So uh, speaking about different looks, um, in the process, obviously, as you mentioned before, of creating the final look of a TV series, you, mm -hmm. on the way, you create several different looks. So... How do you do that in Mystica? What, what would be your recommendations? Uh, especially when working on episodics, I mean, it happens with features as well, but especially working with episodics, I feel like you have a lot of people who have to come to the review, a lot of people who may have an opinion, and you have to go back and forth quite a bit. And sometimes you have to stay in a maybe stage for a long time, like you're working on a sequence and, uh, and, and then at one point a producer feels like the sequence should be more warmer or more daylight and the other one should, uh, and, and maybe something else shouldn't, you know, and another one is not too sure. And sometimes you have to keep it parallel. Sometimes you have to keep it together and just keep it there for a, bit, for a little bit. Uh, in, other, in other sessions, I mean, there has, it has been shown like how in Mystica you can be here, for example, and you can create like a, you can uh, you can just come here at one point and create like some kind of kind of like whatever look or something, and then store that, and uh, and once you have it like create create a history point and then just do like something completely different and create another history point. There you go, create another history point, and then you can toggle between them. You know, uh, that's great when you're working with one shot. What happens when you're working with 740? You know what I mean? And that's 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 the one thing that th that's the one thing that makes it difficult. I mean, hang on, it feel it a little bit slowly. One second. Let's refresh. You know, like when you have that section, when you when you're working with different sections and uh, um, you can have different looks or anything like that, and 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 you want to show sequences in motion, 
that makes a huge difference. You know, like uh, like mm -hmm. it, it's not just one shot that you want to show. It's it's a bunch of them. Let me just group this and hide this so we can work on that. I wanted to use this section, for example. Imagine I want to uh, to to check this whole section. I have notes. I can even close this here. I can put that there, so it's a little bit more difficult. Like when you start doing like, well, how I how do I select it? How do I move it? I mean, I want to change all of this, but it depends. It's similar to this, but not similar to that. Remember, you have an infinite canvas. You want to tweak this, then just duplicate it. Now you have a whole new section of your and a whole new section of your um, of your look that you can tweak. I mean, you can come here and say like, okay, so let's imagine on this one in particular. Somebody has asked us to make this a little bit more, I don't know, let's say, let's go to this shot of them, for example. Make we make it a little bit a little bit more on the cooler side. We want it to be like an early morning or something like that. All right. I can just come out here. Of course, this is easier when you have two monitors. I mean, I always work with two monitors, so working with one is very weird for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody says that, but uh, you know, for, two, for I mean, obvious two, reasons, we have to yeah, do it on course. one. Yeah, you really have to work with two monitors. That's, that makes it really, really good. In, in, even with one monitor, you can just come here and just propagate this change. And see, because right now I don't have anything else in here, I don't even have to select anything. I can just say here, it's like, hey, just propagate this to current layer. And all the color grading nodes that are on that layer are going to be affected. That's what I'm saying about the infinite canvas. I mean, you can move things around. If you don't want to see your whole your whole timeline, you can even group it and then move inside and then you don't have to be bothered by anything else. You can just concentrate on that. For me, I like to see like one thing on top of each other because it allows me to see options. And you can see here how we have our our cooler option on top and then I have our warmer option on the bottom. And if at one point the anybody wants me to show it, I can just click here, come here and show it. And then of course somebody in the room will be like, hey, yeah, I like it, but can we, What what if we have like an in-between? You know, and then if you want to show it quickly, I mean, you can literally just say, okay, let's just, let's just do a, let's just do an in between here. Oops, sorry. Let's just do a, like a non-linear mix of the whole thing, which mixes two sources at 50%. So now you're showing them, you're showing them 50% on both. You know, it's not as warm as this one. It's not as cold as this one. It's kind of in between. Then once they're gone, then you can clean it up and do it better, or you can you can just you can, you can just adjust it so it's so it's um, so it's more efficient, and you start you don't start building castles. But but from from the get go, you can show something quickly. You know, if somebody asks you for something, and you boom boom boom. This is how it will look, and you can compare them. Free to leave. Spaces as well. If you want to start building castles like that and stuff, and you want to keep everything on the same on the same level, feel free to maybe just grab this, bring it up here. Then you have another node over here, put it there, so you can very, 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 very easily you have your empty space and you can just select these things. I also use this sometimes to see when sequences have like an overall different preset visually. You know, like like when you're working on a sequence and you want to know which ones have been. Um, tweaked by request of the client, uh, then I know that any section that I have that looks like that, any section that I have that looks like this has ha like an overall change that the client asked and then probably was tweaked or something. Then maybe we have a few shots that have additional changes and you can just add copy to those. You know what I mean? Uh, don't be honest, don't to, to just open up and, 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 and start moving things around you know it's it's it gives you a lot of them to be able to just duplicate something quickly and show something and that can be done for uh color that can be done for effects that can be done for editorial sometimes a client might want to see multiple versions of this of the visual effect we have our visual effect version 4 in here maybe they we have a bunch of new vfx and they want to see the before and after which is something that is not not rare uh, you can same you can just duplicate this and you can just duplicate this. Sorry, I just started listening to myself in the back. <laughs> you can just duplicate. You can just duplicate this and uh, and have an, a different version of the V effect on top, and very mm -hmm. easy, just hide and show to the client. Uh, of course, you have to see it. <laughs> you can just show to the client quickly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, very very. Uh, cool tips uh, for everybody who are new to Mystica and even the ones that are using it for, for some time now. So I think that um, we have it very clear so far that you're a very organized person. Um, 
I'm not. <laughs> That's why I'm organized. <laughs> I can I be very chaotic. Are. That's why I try. I force myself to be organized. Okay, you have your timeline organized. I will. I will keep it that way. Um, okay. So. Um, Obviously, this is very important when it comes to the preset and layer organization. So why don't you tell us a little bit um, more about that? How do you handle that? You mean that? with color grading? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we go back to the same thing. You know, we go back to the fact that you may have multiple colorists or assistants or, or you in two months who have to open the timeline, it has to have some meaning. I mean, it has to have, you have to make sense to a point. I mean, you open it up and you cannot, if you have like nine layers on one shot and one layer in the other one stuff, I started, you don't even remember what's what. So, uh, and again, this is my method that worked for me, worked for us, worked for my team. Uh, but this is not, I mean, you have to make this your own. You know what I mean? I mean, you have to find what works for you and what makes you comfortable. If you come from a different software that handles layers in a different way, you may want to tweak it in a different way. Some people like to work with multiple color grading nodes. Some people like to work everything within the one. My advice, it's usually, it's better to only try to work within one color grading node when you're working on, 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 on pure color work. Uh, but when you start to tweak stuff that you have already done, maybe because of client notes or you're doing, start doing overalls or little tweaks, it doesn't hurt to have other color grading notes um, to have that, that um, tweak separate, okay? When we go inside of the color note, like we can do it with this, this section as well. Um, this is usually my basic setup, all right? Where it goes like a pre-grade light color saturation. Uh, and this is, as, I mean, by default, you can just change these names and call them whatever you want. You can call them any, anything that, that, that works for you. Mm -hmm. um, the way I usually use it is I try, and I say I emphasis on try because sometimes, I mean, you just, you're just tweaking something and it's not, it's not rocks, it's, it's, it's not super rigid, but it's kind of like an approach, which is like I usually try to touch up what is light in, in the light vector. Like, for example, like most of the tweak that I might have done, onto the light of the scene I might do it here. The main changes in color will probably be on the color one. You can see here how green it was, how I'm compensating all of that and doing this. And saturation, I'm usually using it just for, for specific, specific like fixed vectors and stuff, just maybe tweaking the blues to be a little bit cyan or vice versa, or the skin colors, or et cetera, et cetera. Pre-grade, it's usually for when you have like, you have like, 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 you already have your look and you go to another shot and maybe the sun has changed slightly and you just have to make a little tweak so it falls on the same place. That's where pre-grade will go. But of course, this is an ideal scenario. Most of the shots that we have, and we can we only have to move around a little bit to see it, most of the shots that we have probably have way more than that. Way, way more than those, way more than those vectors. Let's see, like for example, that one. You can see, you can see there how you have many, 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 many more. You know, and, and all of those vectors, all of those different things, I try to keep them under the section where <clears throat> I try to keep them under the section where they're tweaking. You know, like, for mm -hmm. example, if it's if I have this vector four under color, that's probably going to be tweaking something that has to do with color. You know, like uh, in this case, I don't know if you have a qualifier or something. Uh, in this case, it does not have a qualifier. Let's see, this one, one of these has to have a qualifier somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the 750 shots that you have there <laughs> has the yeah. qualifier applied, so. No, 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 but that's the thing. I mean, like, usually, like, as a, as a default, I never use qualifiers mm -hmm. on the main vectors. Mm -hmm. You know, like, imagine, for example, I have this light, all right, and I want to do something to tweak the shadows or something like that. Uh, I will create a new vector. A new vector. Usually, what I do is uh, when you hit insert, I think it creates it before. That's right. The way I do it, which is probably not the right one, but I always duplicate to make sure that it's in the bottom, and then I can tweak it. Mm -hmm. So first, I, I I create a version, a vector in between, and then you can just use your qualifier. I mean, at one point, we can just we may just want to affect the shadows a little bit. You know, I personally like. My favorite is to actually see the key. I mean, that might be from my compositing days or stuff like that. I mean, it drives me nuts when I don't see my key. I mean, I want to see what I'm selecting. <laughs> um, so I have my key, and uh, and once I have it, uh, I can tweak the shadows, maybe maybe open them up a little bit or do whatever 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 you want. Uh, that 
that's happening on a on an expect on a vector next to that one. You see, mm -hmm. we have a little bit open up on the shadows. Um, so that I automatically know when I see it, just just a, by, just with a glimpse, I know that that's going to be something that has to do with light. That's going to be either a selection or a little tweak, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and it helped me see through it. Mm -hmm. the, the advantage to that workflow is that when you go to another shot, like for example, if I'm if I'm comparing like this shot of her, um, this shot of her with this other shot, I can see that in both of them I just have the same number of vectors, and I just have another vector here. Most likely, when I'm tweaking or I'm adding something, the structure is going to be the same. You know, so again, when you're propagating, when you're bringing in color and stir, etc., the more unified everything is, uh, <laughs> the easiest is going to be. To, uh, the easiest is going to be to bring what you want where you want it and have it in a predictable way. Don't be afraid to have empty layers sometimes, you know, like if it helps your organization, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, that, that definitely makes sense. So um, you obviously told us how to manage different versions for review. Um, mm -hmm. How about the deliverables? I mean, you, you have to hand in several different versions, as you said, um, yeah. uh, for a startup. Um, you know, with different resolutions, being SDR, HDR, etc. So, yep. can you tell us a little bit more how you tackle this in in Mystica? Definitely. Um, first of all, conceptually, I think that it's always helpful to go from the largest version to the smallest one. Like, if if your show is going to be HD or 4K. Um, make that decision earlier in the game to make sure that you do everything coherently and consistently. Uh, in Mystica, it's very easy to change resolutions because in Mystica, as long as the aspect ratio is the same, uh, everything is going to stay on the same place. You know, if you have a, like a window, if you have anything, everything is going to remain on the same spot. Mm -hmm. um, so work, start with your biggest resolution, set, uh, set up your project with your biggest resolution, then go smaller as you go. Uh, and use the power of the presets. You know, if you go to the output tab, um, you can see that here we have a bunch of different outputs for different things. These are the ones that we have with startup. Like you can name them whatever you want. So I have like, for example, when I click something called generic, so that's like just a generic template for any pre, but then I have, for example, here, startup specific presets or for other projects like uh, from Ali Angel of Darkness, for example, for Alienist is this one. You know, I have different process, different, different presets where I need things in different formats. Mm -hmm. uh, in here, if you're doing an online, for example, if we were doing the VFX plates, like all the VFX, so we're done in EXRs da -da -da, with this format, et cetera, et cetera, with the resolution. You have your, your scale presets that you can use as well for deliverables, this one DPXs to a different folder, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you have something very powerful in the presets uh, for creating um, different paths, all these paths, can be um, can be can use certain metadata from the from the shot number. I mean, you can render by sections. You can render using the the time code on the timeline. You can force the time code if you want to. Like for example, for VFX, sometimes you start VFX in frame uh, a thousand and one. Um, you can force that time code to be there. Um, you may want to render a quick HD output. I mean, you can just activate scale, and then you can render a, like you can render a quick HD. HD version of your project, or like if you're working with, um, like in Star Trek Into Darkness, for example, Star Trek Into Darkness, we not only had like so many masters, but like we had three different aspect ratios throughout the show because we were showing the movie in film IMAX, which is 166, um, digital IMAX, which is 185, mm -hmm. and then scope, which is 239. Um, there were some shots that had repositioning and all that stuff. And, uh, and we had to track all of those changes throughout. I mean, it was the whole workflow was designed with Mystica. I, I designed the whole workflow from the get-go to be able to centralize all those stages. So as on uh, basically the, the reason why we had multiple aspect ratios is because all the exterior shots were full resolution and all the interiors were scope. And it sounded very strange at the beginning, but it actually worked really well. When you went to the cinema, it felt like when you were going outside, it like, open up you know mm -hmm. but you have to keep all of that so on in that in that it, that's an example of of working from the bigger to the smaller right we have mm -hmm. our our main resolution for the whole thing and then as we were outputting masters we could catch up in different ways different different shots in this case the container will be either one format um either one format for the whole thing and then with crops 
and mm -hmm. uh, timings around, or just the last 239 would be just everything cropped and just repos and stuff. So we were using this same technique that I was showing you about mm -hmm. the VFX, which in Star, Star Trek we have so many VFX that it didn't make any sense to mark them. Um, <laughs> but we did mark the repos. You know what I mean? Like, like it's it's one of those things where, where like, like mm, it's a tool and you have to use it for whatever works for you. The the thing that was to be taken into account on Star Trek was um, was the repos, was moving everything up and down, all that stuff. So that's what we used to market. So at any point, if we had to recheck them just in case, make sure it's fine, we could visually see exactly where they were and just going for them. Mm 